Welcome, and welcome back, everybody, to the OK Grognard Show. It is Monday, August 30th, 2021, 10 a.m. Central, in beautiful Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. Thanks for your patience, everybody, while I got this thing up and running today. Still some residual problems from last week, apparently, that I was not aware were going to be additional problems. Anyway, we got it squared away. We're streaming live. I know last week we had a recorded show go up, and that uh, was a shame because I had uh, I'd been putting up uh, streams, doing live stream for a very long time, and uh, having those issues broke my streak. So bad break there. In any event. I think I wanted to talk today about Dungeon Master campaigning. That is to say, the supply side of campaigning. What uh, What is in the hands of the Dungeon Master? I had a recent issue come up um, in the campaign I'm running. A meta issue, a <clears throat> issue that... Uh, uh, was about logistics of the of the game for the players of the campaign and uh, it was something you know sometime back I probably would have not even uh, thought that it might be an issue but because uh, DMs I think we often understand that uh, without somebody running the game, in this particular case, Dungeons and Dragons, without a game master, this particular RPG just doesn't work. Um, so when somebody's putting a campaign together, you kind of become the integral part to it. If you can't make it, sure they can play something else, the, the the rest of the group, but you're not playing that campaign. So whether or not the campaign happens each time it's going to happen. It's definitely uh, in the hands of the dungeon master first and foremost. If you have a large group and a player or two can't manage to be there, then um, often uh, a campaign can go on. Because schedules being what they are, back in the day and today even more so, uh, you know, things come up and sometimes people can't make it in any event we run a regular game twice a month and we had a couple of players that couldn't make it the last time we were going scheduled to play and so uh, I called the game I said you know what with only three out of five because that's our that's our group size this time around with only three out of five I said you know the campaign's new enough it's only been a couple of months uh, that uh, the campaign is new enough that we'll we'll just call the session. We won't we won't have a uh, a game on that day with you know 40 percent of the players missing because with the campaign that new, it's kind of important that everybody is there as you know things are being uh, launched missions are being uh, picked up. Hey, George, thanks for stopping in today. Sorry for the delay getting started. Um, So I I don't want anybody to miss this early. There's a lot of new information, a lot of new players. Um, These are all new players to my campaign. They're not all new players to first edition nor to any kind of Dungeons & Dragons or RPGing. even the youngest player amongst us has been playing RPGs for five, six, seven years, something like that. <clears throat> so everybody's good to go. But it's integral to the campaign to have everybody there to get the early information so that down the line they all feel as if they're part of the world and they're not disconnected from the group important anyway when the last session couldn't happen um i said no problem we're gonna make the call not gonna happen well there was 
we often play on Tuesdays. There's an extra Tuesday in August. And I said, you know what? We'll just have a, uh, a game on that extra Tuesday. And uh, that'll make up for the one we missed. I was like, well, one of the players uh, immediately chimed in and said, well, I, I won't be in town. I can't do it. And uh, part of my saying that we'd play on the extra Tuesday, I also mentioned, and in future, you know, if one or two players can't make it, um, just know that we'll, we'll play anyway, um, you know, if, because if we've only got two games scheduled a month and we've got people going forward not being able to make it, they've got to know that, uh, you know, we'll miss a whole month of playing. That would be awkward, problematic. So I had to make a decision because now we've got a player who can't make it, but it wasn't, a, wasn't originally scheduled. It was kind of a pickup game to make up for one we missed. And uh, even though I said that that's what we were going to do, uh, or said that that's what I was prepared to do and had been asking the players if they could do it with the intent that we would do it anyway if we only had one or two people missing, well, it didn't seem fair. Uh, in retrospect, after I made the suggestion, I realized, you know, throwing an extra game on the schedule <clears throat> at a time when uh, some of the players didn't expect that game to be on the schedule and had made other plans wasn't fair to those players. So I reversed my decision, backtracked, flip-flopped, whatever you want to call it, and uh, said, no, nah, okay, that's that's on me. We will not uh, have that have that extra game. We'll wait till our next regularly scheduled game and move forward with the campaign as uh, as we would have otherwise. So that's the end of that. But uh, I think it's important to note that uh, when you're uh, running a campaign as a DM, uh, it's good to get as much input as possible before you make plans for other people. It's uh, it's always a, a good idea, obviously, to to uh, get information from everybody, but certainly very important when scheduling games to uh, check in with everybody first, you know, before you pull the trigger on when you're going to play. Know in advance whether anyone else is not available so that... Uh, you don't have to reverse those calls. George says it can be tough to stay on a schedule with real life issues and balancing pros and cons when short on players. Yeah, exactly. It's uh, it's impossible to know everybody's schedule, and when somebody doesn't expect there to be a game, uh, why wouldn't they make other plans? They uh, they have other people in their lives who are asking them to uh, make plans. And you know what? Right now, this kind of, uh, as we limp back to normalcy in the world, in the U.S., <clears throat> as we uh, try to uh, start functioning again in a normal way. Uh-oh, looks like I froze up. I uh, don't know if my video is... Oh, I see. Wait a second now. Let's see if I can do this. How'd that work? No. Looks like my video froze up. Let me try it one more time here. I think I can deactivate and reactivate it and get it going again. Hopefully that worked. We'll see in just a few seconds as the lag pairs out. In any event, uh, yeah, a lot of what we're dealing with is, uh, in some ways, people catching up on all the things they didn't get to do for over a year of uh, isolation, limited uh, 
limited uh, vacationing or travel. Um, certainly a limit. <laughs> George says save versus petrification. Absolutely. I had to make my uh, deactivation roll and reactivation roll. And I guess they both worked. So uh, you, you can't blame people for adding a lot to their schedule as quickly as they can, as often as they can to make up for all the th all the things they missed. Um, seeing relatives, canceling vacation plans they may have had f over the last year. Um, you know, getting time off seems like a treat unless most of the things that you would have done with time off can't be done. So it's... Uh, something to consider anyway we're not going to do a super long show today um we're talking about dungeon master campaigning i guess uh the three tips i have in regard to this one situation is you know solicit information from your players up front um double check with people's schedules before you change a schedule or add anything to a schedule now you may well have to cancel games and there's no way around that but if you add additional games to a schedule you've got to make sure that uh, that everyone's available to play before you go out on that limb George is asking what level is the group well we really <clears throat> have only played a few sessions so they are uh, just getting up into level two They've collected uh, some experience. I don't think everybody's moved up yet. Um, I'm actually sure everybody has. They've they spent a, spent a fair deal of time uh, getting to know their kind of base of operations, their main town, where they're staying, and cementing relationships and creating. Uh, we were creating contacts and context for the group in each uh, individual player character so that going forward they could uh, rely on certain avenues of information and uh, support and supplies all of the things that if they'd been living in the skins of these characters 24 7 for however many years old the character is would have been all ingrained in them anyway that's that's something worth talking about a little bit um there's a couple of uh obstacles to a successful campaign that if you lay the groundwork for it can <clears throat> can uh, really help make for a smoother campaign down the line as well as one that's more immersive and that is spending the time early on making sure the players know who their characters are within your setting um, they have an idea what they'd like to play they have an idea what they think their character is all about but until that character uh, is uh, contextualized within the actual setting uh, how do they know their character their place in the world is of utmost importance to knowing who that character is. Low level can be so fun as they get their mojo. Absolutely, George. It's uh, it's definitely true that while they're uh, getting to learn these characters and getting to understand uh, who they're playing and where they're where what setting they're playing in and how it all connects as they're getting those feet under them uh, it becomes uh, a lot more fun for them to then uh, start suggesting things they're going to do knowing the ramification and consequences of their actions potential ramifications and consequences of their actions prior to taking action is a large part of the risk reward that makes for a satisfying game 
if if my character is just a group of numbers on a sheet of paper and there's no I can just make another one uh, there's no immersion if there's no stake for me in what happens to that character if consequences thereby don't matter then any action I take no matter how seemingly bold is inconsequential and uh, there, thereafter not not as satisfying as it could be it may be fun to roll high numbers uh, in a in a war game or in any kind of a game just because it's fun rolling dice and knowing that they came out in your favor but if there are no stakes then it's a lesser version of rolling the dice than it could have been well that's about it we started late so we're gonna end it a little early <laughs> basically we're uh, ending a little bit after the usual time that we would end but it's a shorter shorter show today and that's okay some of these shows can be a little shorter they don't have to all be a half hour in any event I want to thank you very much George for stopping by and I see I've got some other lurkers so thanks to everybody there as well I do appreciate it and uh, let me also say now that we got all the kinks worked out that we should continue to be having our shows Monday at 10 a.m. Central we stream on Twitch live each Monday at 10 a.m. and then it's archived on YouTube if you can join us on Twitch, I'd appreciate it. Follow the channel. Feel free to hop into the stream chat and say hello when you do. Thanks to George and everybody else who popped in today. If you catch up with this on YouTube, do yourself a favor and subscribe to the channel. Click on the bell to get updates when new shows are being uploaded. Please do also give the thumbs up to any videos that you watch and enjoy. And also feel free to comment on videos. Uh, got some input into the topic of the show or just want to help make the show better. That would be appreciated very much. This has been the OK Grognard Show from beautiful Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. Bye-bye.